Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come before you once again. We ask that you order our step this evening. Help us that the information we put forward will bring honor and glory to our holy God. These are the things we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome one and all. Welcome to our presentation this evening on fibroids. Mom, I thought that you were pregnant. Let's continue. The, the story is told um, in Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 34, of a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse when she had heard of Jesus Came in, the press, came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Okay, so something I want to, as we are listening in this evening, I want you to think of this for me. The young lady, she had um, fibroids. It was bleeding. Um, and when I present the presentation, I'm going to ask which type of fibroid she has. Because you'll realize that later on, there are about five different types of fibroids. But there's a specific one that she had. Let me know. Just in the box, just type in the type of fibroid she has when we get to that area. Just going back, just one, one verse, and it says, Straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she had been healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touch my clothes. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude throng in thee, and seest thou who touch me? And he looked round about to see her that had, gone, that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth, and she said unto her daughter, and she said, uh, and he said unto her, daughter, thy fate had made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Now, what are tumors? A tumor is an abnormal mass of tissue which may be solid or fluid filled. The body uses tumors as containers to store toxic waste collected throughout the body. When the system's natural ways of elimination are overloaded, the lungs, bowels, kidneys, liver, and skin, um, these are all means of elimination. These are all means that the body uses to eliminate waste. But when these channels of elimination becomes clogged or inadequate to care for the excess refuse, the body starts manufacturing garbage cans or tumor cases and place the waste products in them. You know, you'll always hear individuals always say that whenever there's a tumor or there's a mass in someone's body, the worst thing to do is to cut that. That's why there are many individuals that opposes biopsies because to biopsy an item you're basically opening up that tumor container where the body natural mechanism is to contain all that waste within a tumor as a mean of reducing the amount of damage to the human body Fibroids. We're going to be discussing natural remedy therapies for prevention, reversal, as well as treatments. What are fibroids? Okay. 
Um, and when we talk about fibroids, know that fibroids can be cancerous or non-cancerous, but for the most part, they are mainly non-cancerous. They tend to grow within the walls of the uterus. They can be small, they can be large, they can be single, or they can be multiple. Okay, so we are talking about fibroids, we are talking about um, myoma, uh, lioma, lio, lioma or myoma, okay, is what we talked about. We are talking about fibroids. There are five basic types of fibroids. And what we're going to do, we're going to take our time and outline what those five basic types of fibroids are. The first one is one that's called intramural fibroids. Fibroids. This is the most common that tends to grow in the wall of the uterus. You also have one that is called the subserosal fibroids. This grow on the outside of the uterus. As they tend to grow larger, they can cause pain due to their size or pressure that is placed on nearby organs. You have another one by the name of the submucosal fibroid. This grows just underneath the uterine lining and can crowd into the uterus cavity and lead into heavy bleeding and more and other more serious complications. And then the last two is called pedunculated fibroids and intracavitary fibroids. The pedunculated fibroids, these tend to grow on small stalks inside or outside the uterus. The intracavitary fibroids occur on a long stalk on the inside of the uterus or the inside the cavity of the uterus. It is possible for one to have more than one type of fibroids. With all that is being said about these five different fibroids, can someone tell me what type of fibroids that young lady in the book of Mark had? Um, does anyone know which fibroids she had? Okay, um, let's see. Does anyone know? You are correct. The fibroids that she was dealing with is called the submucosal fibroids. This is why she had the heavy bleeding um, for all these years. She was actually dealing with the submucosal fibroids. Um, basically here, we put them all on one picture here for you. You get a chance to see the different position of these fibroids and the different name of the fibroids based on their location. Okay, so you get a chance to see what these fibroids literally look like. Now, before I go into um, the images here, I want to share a few little stories here. Remember a young lady came to me, and she had had fibroids six times, okay? She did five surgeries, and even after doing five surgeries, Five boys were back again, and she says, you know something, I know that I have to do something different. Now, saints, I want to share this with you. One of the things you'll realize is that surgery does not solve the issue with fibroids, okay? In order to get a different result, you have to do something different. Surgery, it is not the solution. You can say surgery does assist in some cases in the solution, but it is not the solution. The solution is much deeper and broader than that of surgery. I remember speaking to another young lady recently, and that young lady said to me, she says, James, um, I had surgery three months ago, um, and I removed all of the, she, you know, she said I had surgery, and I removed all of the fibroids. She says, three months later, when I went to do my follow-up, lo and behold, the fibroids were back again. Um, you know, and 
as she looked again, they were small, but normally the way these things go is that within one year from the time they are seen, they normally return back to their full size one year later. Okay? And the thing about it, they tend to travel in multiples. And by the time we break this thing down, you'll have a thorough understanding. Now, I want to share a few more stories. I remember I was in California, and I did a recording on fibroids, and a physician heard the recording and shared it with a few of, um, a few of uh, uh, physicians that were just um, going through some training. They had some training for some physicians, and one of the physicians who was dealing with fibroids she decided to go ahead and try the treatment. Lo and behold, while she was cleaning herself, taking a shower, lo and behold, there came out the fibroid in the bathtub while she was taking care of herself. Now, if you stop to think about it, it's very likely she was dealing with um, one of the, 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 the fibroids that has that extension. I'm talking the pedunculated fibroids um, or the intracavitary fibroids, um, the ones that were extended by the stalk. When she took, uh, while she was taking a shower while following the program, lo and behold, one fell right out of her, um, and it was the one that she was dealing with. Um, I remember another young lady just called me the other day, and her story was even more grim. Um, she's an attorney, and she decided that she did not want to, you know, and she had a major project coming up, and she did not want to have her menstruation um, during the time that she had that major project, simply because of the difficulty she tend to encounter. So she went to a, um, a physician within her area, and she asked the physician, hey, is there anything you can give me to stop the period from coming because I'm in the midst of a major project and I cannot afford to have my period come because when it comes, I'll be totally down. The physician went on to give her something, and lo and behold, the, the, the menstrual cycle did not stop. It kept on coming, and it came with even more vengeance. Um, she went to another. She she went and spoke to a friend of hers, and a friend introduced her to um, 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 another physician. And the physician said to her at that time, "Hey, listen, the treatment you did was wrong. You should have done this one instead." So lo and behold, she went ahead and did the next treatment that was recommended to her, and the the, the flow, her menstrual cycle came with even a more vengeance. Um, and the thing about this young lady, I had a chance to speak with her, and as she and I were talking, she says, Brother Luke, things got so rough for me that there are times she could not even leave her home. And she says that uh, when she did leave her home, um, she, while traveling in the taxi of, you know, the tax of someone's car, she said she would just feel something on her leg, and lo and behold, when she looked on the person's seat, the person's seat was completely red. And she says many times taxi drivers would just look at her and say, uh, we understand, go ahead. Um, but she'll be in the public, um, and her clothes are completely um, messed up in a public setting. And it became so humiliating, so embarrassing for her, that she decided that she was going to spend most of her time at home. So for almost a year, she did not move from her home because she was so weak um, and the, the constant embarrassment of that bleeding fibroids. She heard that I was doing a program, and she and her, fam her family listened in on the program that I did, called her, and told her to get in touch with me. She got in touch with me. I put her on the program. Within a short period of time, all the bleeding stopped. And, and the saints, I'll tell you something. I was just so pleased to see how God was just working. The bleeding stopped. She said to me, she says, James, I, was, I, I felt, she says, I've never had a child, 
but I felt that I was constantly pregnant. She says, it feels like I was maybe about six, seven months pregnant. And lo and behold, after we put her on the program and those fibroids begin to shrink, within a short period of time, she was able to start laying on her stomach. Prior to going on the program, she was not able to lay on her stomach simply because if she lay on her stomach, because of the size of the fibroids, she would have major pain. And she was able to lay on her stomach. Right now, she's back at work, practicing as an attorney, and doing amazingly. And I want to tell you that that promise could be for you. What that blessing that occurred in that young lady's life, that could be your blessing. Just sit back, be patient, and you watch the glory of God. Here's a few images that I would like to share with you for individuals who have never seen what fibroids look like, here's an example that you can actually see what is literally taking place in our ladies. And this is why I'm making the appeal to our ladies, um, especially for them to consider a change of diet. Because there are individuals out there that may not want you to have children. And as a result, you will find that certain types of food that you eat would actually cause a, a definite, um, uh, or you can say a major increase in these things. But once these changes are made, you sit back and watch the glory of God. So take a look at a few of these images. Um, take a look right here. If you take a look where the position of that fibroid, it's right in the abdomen region of our ladies. Um, there's the mother, and there are all the babies. Now, if you take a look, let me just see if I can move my cursor. There's my cursor right there. You see that little one? Within one year, that little one will take on the size of the full size one here, or even bigger. Okay, so they normally start very small, but within one year, it will come to full size. And just take a look at how many fibroids are literally here in this one specific lady. So you have three, six, nine, twelve, and then you have your three here. A total of 15 fibroids was removed from this particular individual. So let's continue here. Take a look right here. You can tell that with this specific lady, she just had a tremendous amount. All these little items are all fibroids that were found in that specific lady. Now you'll see that they get even larger as you take a look uh, at these items. They, they get even huge, just absolutely huge. Um, when you look at this one, this one actually seems like the size of a baby. I'll tell you a story as I look at this. You can see like there's a head, like there's a nose, there's a hand. Um, I remember I was in um, Atlanta, Georgia, and I was with a family member. And the family member and I were talking, and while we were there talking, we looked over and we saw a young lady. So I looked at my family member and said, family, question for you. How many months pregnant do you think that young lady is? And the family member I, I was with, she was an older lady. She said, that young lady, she's not pregnant. I said, listen. That young lady is pregnant. The, the, the family member said, James, she's not pregnant. I said, listen to me, that young lady is pregnant. She says, I have had two, um, you know, two babies of my own, so I know when a woman is pregnant from when she's not. She's not pregnant. I said, she is pregnant. I said, tell you what, I'm just going to go and ask her. So... You know, I was there pumping gas by Costco, and I said to the young lady, by the way, congratulations, how many months are you? And the young lady looked at me and she says, sir, I am not pregnant at all. And I was just so embarrassed. I didn't even want to hear the rest of the story. I just stopped right there. And this is where we get the title of our story, I Thought That You Were Pregnant. You know, because one of the things you'll find about fibroids, fibroids do cause a major disten uh, distension of our lady's stomach. And in many cases, you think these ladies are pregnant 
when technically speaking, they are not. So just want to show you uh, just a few more images of what these things look like. They are absolutely a woman's worst nightmare. Okay? Now, as we advance through the presentation, you will find that within this specific slide, the answer for healing is going to take place. The answer for healing is going to take place. And it is important you pay close attention. Primary causes of fibroids. Uh, the prim primary cause of fibroids, you'll find that fibroids tend to increase in size in women when they are increased levels of estrogen in the body. Okay? When they are what? Increased levels of estrogen in the body. Um, when the vitamin D levels are low, when there are hormone disruptors or thyroid imbalances. So you see um, four of the primary causes of fibroids, we, we, just four on this page right here, are an increased level of estrogen, low levels of vitamin D, as well as hormone disruptors, and thyroid imbalance. So we're going to address it from these different perspectives, and by the time we're finished, you'll have a thorough understanding of what's taking place with this topic, the topic of fibroids. Mom, I thought that you were pregnant. When it comes to women, women's hormone, one of the things I want all women to be aware of is that women are lunar. Now, I did not say that women are lunar ticks, okay? I said women are lunar. What do I mean by women are lunar? Meaning that the woman get her menstrual cycle from the, uh, from the moon, ultimately from the sun, but the timing from the moon. We know that the moon has no light of its own. The moon reflects the sun, okay? And if you look at the moon, technically speaking, the, the total phase of the moon is 28 days, okay? The total phase is 28 days. The first 14 days of a woman's menstrual cycle, estrogen is most dominant. The last 14 days of a woman's menstrual cycle, progesterone is most dominant, okay? And basically, when you look at the moon, here is how the moon lines up. You'll find that when there's a new moon, all women at that time should be menstruating. When there's a new moon. When there's a full moon, which will come 14 days after the new moon, a woman should be ovulating. So if you would like to, to, to um, be in a position of, uh, of fertility, being able to have babies and different things like that, it is important that you understand new moon, menstruation, full moon, ovulation, and during the ovulation period is the best time for you to get pregnant. Um, so as long as you understand that, it will make all the difference in the world. Now with that being said now, I want to go and add something. I realize that a lot of women of color are avoiding the sun. Um, be it that they might live in regions of the world that does not give adequate level of sunlight, or they might be living in areas of the world where there are more than adequate level of sunlight, but they have been listening to a lot of the, the media, reading a lot of bad information, and they're taking this information as gospel, which they're not good information, but are putting them at risk for not being able to conceive at all. Um, so one of the things that our ladies need to understand is that technically speaking, the way everything should work, very, very simple, if you go back to the olden days, because 
Um, I'm currently right now here in the Caribbean, and when I was a child growing up, in the olden days, I'll tell you how our older ladies basically used to know, know how to do this thing. They follow the moon, yes, but then it's a very simple way to look at the month. At the beginning of the month, you know that it's the time for menstruation. At the middle of the month, you know it is time for ovulation. You, you know, and that's what it is. It's a constant cycle. Beginning of the, you can say beginning or end of the month, menstruation. Middle of the month, ovulation. Very simple. So, you know, so parents could have easily planned and strategized for their young girls if they understood the lunar cycle when it comes to women. Okay? Beginning or end of the month, menstruation. Middle of the month, ovulation. Are we making sense to you? Okay? Keep that in mind. And as long as you keep that in mind, you sit back and watch the glory of God. I know some ladies, they're like, you've got to be kidding me. Um, I kid you not. So if you find that you are not maintaining that type of schedule, you know right off the get-go, you need to get some more sunlight. So all you got to do, go and check your calendar. You know we just passed the middle of the month just recently. So the middle of the month should be what? Ovulation time. We are now approaching the end of the month. In terms of approaching the end of the month, we know that that would be menstruation um, time. Now, there is something else I need to add to it, which, you know, which I think is rather amazing. Okay? Um, I, I got to add this one specific point. And, well, tell you what. I'm going to get back to that point in a second. Um, and... But it's a key point that I want to make sure that our ladies understand. Um, it just slipped my mind real quick there. And by God's grace, I'm hoping that it comes back because it was rather um, an important point. Um, but let me move on. And as soon as it comes back, I will let you know. But it, it's a rather important point, especially when you're dealing with um, the, the menstruation period. But just keep in mind, that's the simple, basic way to understand this. Uh, you'll also find, and, and, and i got to tell you this, uh, if there are multiple ladies in a home, if there are multiple ladies in a home, you'll, and they are following the same lifestyle, you'll find that they will menstruate and ovulate at the same exact time. You know, and a lot of our ladies, they're like, wow, what's going on, you know? We're pulling from each other. No, you're not. You're not pulling from each other. It's just that because your lifestyle is similar, you guys are all lining up with the moon and ultimately the sun. That's, that's, that's all the simplicity to it. There's no, you know, you're getting any energy from each other or anything like that. No, none of that. All you're doing is lining up with the moon and lining up with the sun, which all women should line up that way. Okay. Um, oh, I, I, let me add these little pointers here. I think these pointers would be good to add here. Um, three quick little pointers, maybe three or four. I'll see how much. I think at least three I'll give you. Um, if a woman finds that she's bleeding excessively, listen good, if a woman finds that she's bleeding excessively, nine out of ten times is chronic deficiency in sunlight. Nine out of ten times is chronic deficiency in sunlight. Vitamin D deficiency. I'll tell you a story. I remember a while back, a young lady came to me, and she says, James, my sister is in the hospital and she has been bleeding nonstop now for the last three months, and nobody knows what's going on. They think that she has cancer, but the problem is she's bleeding so much that they can't get a chance to go in and really check her to see what is taking place, but they have a feeling that she may have cancer. I asked the young lady, um, what type of work does this sister do? 
And after she told me the type of work her sister do, I says, oh, I think I know what the problem is. It seems like your sister might be chronically deficient in sunlight, chronic vitamin D deficiency. So I said to the young lady, take this vitamin D, go to your sister and offer her um, some of this and give her X amount of vitamin D. And lo and behold, guess what? She went ahead and she gave her sister the X amount of vitamin D that I suggested. And lo and behold, guess what? Within a couple of days, all of the bleeding completely stopped. A um, few days later, after the bleeding stopped, the young lady was able to leave the hospital. Uh, one day, I am at the health food store, you know what I mean, and restaurant, and I'm here working, and a young lady walked in, and I got to tell you this, she was like a black woman, white as snow. Okay, black woman, white as snow. And she said, sir, do you know who I am? And I said, yes, I do. She said, who am I? And I said, well, you are very likely the young lady who has been bleeding for the last three months, who was up at the hospital and was just recently released. Is that, do I have the right person? She says, yes, you do. How did you know that? I said, because you, you look white as snow, <laughs> you know, you, you virtually don't have any blood. Um, so I figured that it would be you. And she says, yes, it's me. I said, I'm so excited to see that the Lord has, um, has stopped that situation. So she was so excited. So one of the things I want to appeal to our ladies, know that whenever you find that there's excessive bleeding, be it longer period times, or longer bleeding periods, the nine out of ten times it has to do with lack of adequate level of sunlight. That's number one. Number two, if you find that our ladies tend to have chronic pain, chronic pain, nine out of ten times the chronic pain has to do with lack of physical activity during the menstrual cycle okay lack of physical activity during the menstrual cycle so if you find a woman that is not exercising at all during the menstruation period during that whole month period she will tend to be one that have tremendous amount of pain so you want to make sure that there's adequate level of exercise that takes place throughout the menstruation period. Um, number three, if you find that there are clots in the, 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 the menstruation, if there's clots in the menstruation, it's very likely that during the menstruation cycle that you were dehydrated. So if our ladies are not drinking adequate level of water, during the menstruation cycle, they will have issues with clots. So you have the blood clot issue, you have, um, you have the pain, and you also have the bleeding. So those are uh, some basic tips that can help our ladies um, during that time. Okay, so let me continue on here. Now, sources of estrogen, sources of estrogen we're going to, okay? So let's go on. Now, one of the things you're going to find, and this is rather amazing, okay, with sources of estrogen, first of all, no, rule number one, there'll be no consumption of flesh items, period. There'll be no fish, chicken, turkey, beef, pork, shrimp, lobster, conch, crab, butter, eggs, ice cream, cheese, goat, lamb, and animal milk. There'll be no flesh consumption, period, okay? So with the elimination of flesh in its entirety, now I want to deal with other sources of estrogen. And the reason being, what we have is a situation where 
um, with the, the flesh items, you'll find that um, many of the antibiotics and the, 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 the whatever feed or food that is given to these animal items are loaded with estrogen and as, as a result you'll find that this estrogen not only does it deal with the animal itself but it also deals with the eater okay and we find that the GMO soy um, be it whether or not it's GMO or non GMO soy should not be consumed if individuals are dealing with fibroids so the GMO soy is absolutely bad, should, it's not food, should never be consumed. However, even our ladies who chooses to eat organic soy, they should not use it also to, because it is estrogen is the issue, be it um, um, phytoestrogen or be it the synthetic estrogen, either way we're going to have a problem with the size of those fibroids. I remember one young lady came to me and um, she decided to go total plant-based and when she went total plant-based she kept the soy in and lo and behold the fibroids still grow. She decided to stay total plant-based but took the soy out and lo and behold the fibroids were gone. So one of the things that you, you need to understand whether or not we're dealing with plant-based estrogen, natural plant-based estrogen, or synthetic estrogen, either one will cause the growth. You have isolate genistein. Um, this naturally occurs in substances in soy, fava beans, and other foods, but often found in supplements and pharmaceuticals for many things, including heart and prostate health. These are also highly estrogenic and has to go. Um, propylgalate, okay, um, preservative for um, most items like popcorn soup mixes or even chewing gum, um, that ingredient is used in those areas. So you'll understand that if I say to the ladies who are dealing with fibroids, please do not chew any gum, please avoid these soup mixes in cans, boxes, whatever plastic bottles, wherever they're in, please avoid them. Please also avoid all microwavable popcorn because of the chemical that they use for these items. Please leave those items alone. Oral contraceptive as well as birth control pills. Um, these items are going to cause major, major issues when it comes to um, fibroids. We find that excess hormones tend to be excreted into the urine when it enters the wastewater and also into our environment. These hormones get into our water supply. It affects everyone. It doesn't just affect our ladies, but it affects everyone that actually uses that water, be it even in its um, purification um, process. Okay? So both oral contraceptive and birth control will raise a major risk for our ladies when it comes to fibroids okay um, you also find there's also an item that is used it's called Everfresh it's a substance used as a preserv preservative for shellfish products um, you have during pregnancy also too we got to remember too that ladies um, tend to have a higher level of estrogen naturally during pregnancy. So you'll find that during pregnancy, um, fibroids tends to grow. And that's why many times when fibroids and a baby are both competing um, for blood supply, many times the fibroids will end up dominating and kill that child. Okay, so you got to make sure that you are doing your part so in that way you can reduce the excessive amount of estrogen in the body, be it natural or unnatural. Um, you'll find that um, simple things like um, fi um, fi uh, fi fi what's that? phylates or perfume ingredients 
Um, these tend to disrupt the endocrine system as well as cause an increase in the estrogen level. Um, plastic tubing, um, packaging used in um, food processing, plastic shower curtain, vinyl, vinyl flooring, all these items are highly estrogenic. Um, the lipsticks our ladies tend to put on, our lip liners, the fingernail polishes, the um, extensions they put on their fingernail, the shower gels, the, 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 uh, you know, all those goodies that our ladies tend to use, these items tend to be a source of estrogen. Um, consider natural personal care like coconut oil, olive oil, shea butter, natural oils or butters, natural deodorants, natural soaps, natural shampoos. Consider these items. If not, you may also want to consider making your own. Try to stay away from all plastic items unless they are bisphenol A free or BPA free as we know it. Okay, um, plastic bottles is a no-no for ladies that are dealing with fibroids. Um, make sure our ladies stay away completely from all pesticides, herbicides, and so forth. Um, I got to tell you a story about a friend of mine. A um, friend of mine, him and his wife, they, they live in uh, West Virginia. They lived in West Virginia. And one day... Um, this young lady, uh, she was actually doing the lawn and she was pr um, um, sprinkling some of the weed killers on the lawn. And while sprinkling the weed killer, uh, the, the, the wind blew and blew that, the, the powder back into her face. And as it blew the powder back into her face, within a few minutes after that powder went back in her face, she began menstruating. Um, and she, met, she bled, she bled, she bled, she bled. Um, she basically almost ble um, uh, uh, completely bleed all of the blood out of her body. Now, I'll tell you something. Whenever I read the scripture, and the scripture says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, it is truly that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. The problem that occurred with that young lady is that the, 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 the item that she was sprinkling, the weed killer that she was sprinkling, actually poisoned the blood um, when she ingested it. And what the body did, because of the poisoned blood and the possibility of that poisoned blood destroying the organs, the body naturally begins to dump the blood before it begins organ destruction. And I remember she actually had to go to the hospital and had several blood transfusion to get herself back in line because the body naturally dumped um, um, all of the blood that basically was contaminated that would have destroyed her organ. I thought that I just fit that story in. That's a story I've told in the past, but I, I kind of like telling it when I see situations like that. Um, try clo try closer. Um, it's a hand sanitizer um, that individual tends to use. Um, know that this also would be a, a source of estrogen. You should consider making your own. How do you make your own? Very simple. You can just get some aloe vera gel. We have that at the health food store. A little tea tree oil, a little oregano oil, and you put it in. If you want a little flavor to it, you can either drop some eucalyptus oil or some peppermint oil in there, and it actually gives it a nice little smell if you want an extra smell to it. But technically speaking, just the aloe vera gel with the tea tree oil and the oregano oil would be your natural hand sanitizer, and you would be fine there. Um, parabens and plasticizers, these are also sources of estrogen. You should be mindful and my recommendation to you is to, to basically go to a clean lifestyle when you're dealing with these um, fibroids. Hormone re replacement therapy, highly problematic. Um, it is given to some women whose estrogen and progesterone levels drop significantly due, due to menopause. Estrogen and progesterone are hormones. 
hormone replacement therapy tops up a woman's level of essential hormone. So my recommendation is that if you're doing fibroids, hormone replacement therapy would not be um, a therapy that you'd want to use. Um, let's go on a little bit more here and we, before we break. Dairy milk and its byproduct. Dairy milk accounts for about 80% of the estrogen consumed throughout the human diet. Milk products from pregnant cows, which is how all milk products are produced, contains roughly about 33%, let's go, 33 times as much estrogen as milk from non-pregnant cows. Let me repeat that once again so you can get that um, clean. Milk produced from pregnant cows, which is how all milk products are produced, contains about 33 times as much estrogen as milk from non-pregnant cows. So that's why you may hear I use my Antem. No fish, chicken, turkey, beef, pork, shrimp, lobster, conch, crab, butter, eggs, ice cream, cheese, goat, lamb, and animal milk. So when you hear that Antem, this is one of the major reasons behind it because of the high estrogenic level that one tends to get. Or uh, we, you can say our ladies are living in an estrogen dominance era right now that is putting them at major risk and they're having major issues. You'll also find too when it comes to our ladies, um, uh, our ladies, they, they like size. You, you, you know what I mean? Everywhere you go. You, you know, our ladies want to be, well, I should say Caribbean ladies. Uh, it won't be um, in the UK as well as in the US or France and those places. But in the Caribbean, or uh, our women of Caribbean descent, these women, they love size. And what our ladies that love all these sides do not realize is that estrogen loves fat. Estrogen loves fat. Um, so whenever there's excess, excessive fat on the body, guess what it does? It just grabs the estrogen and holds the estrogen and stores the estrogen. So as a result, you'll find that ladies that tend to have extra blessings are the ladies that are more likely to be dealing with fibroids. Not saying that smaller ladies don't have fibroids, because they do. But you'll find that fibroids will be uh, even more pronounced or uh, more um, uh, it, with ladies that tend to have extra blessings. But you'll find that there are other factors that will cause women of all sizes to have uh, fibroids, be it uh, a slender lady, be it a normal sized lady, or be it a lady with extra blessing. All are at risk depending on which uh, of those four basic principles that we mentioned earlier, be it vitamin D deficiency or estrogen driven or hormone disruptors. Uh, uh, you, you know, if they in these, fall into these categories, any which way they go can definitely cause the issue. Now, I want to share some research here in reference to um, vitamin D deficiency. Um, I remember the first time, the very first time I had a chance to go to the UK, and uh, I began working with the ladies in the UK. It blew my mind. Almost every woman of color that came to me while I was in the UK, almost every single one of them was dealing with fibroids. And you sit back and say, wow. Why do all these women have fibroids? L let's go to the research. Okay? Um, basically, it just shows you how the body converts um, sunlight into the, the hormone pre-vitamin D. Let me show you the study that I want to go to. Listen to this. Here's a study. The National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences Uterine Fibroid Study of Women between the ages of 35 to 49 years of old show that insufficient vitamin D was associated with a reduced... Uh, oh, let, let, let's, let's, let's say that back. I, I erred on that statement. They said here, the National Institute of Environmental Health 
sciences of the uterine fibroid study of women between the ages of 35 to 49 years old showed that sufficient vitamin D when women had sufficient level. But I want to share something with you. If you see it says greater than 20 nanograms per milliliter, 20 nanograms per milliliter, that's deficient still. Okay, that's still deficient. We'd like our ladies to be at least 30 and higher, um, being 30 being a low normal, but at least 40 and above is where we'd want our ladies to be at. You say it was associated with a reduced risk of uterine fibroid by 30, 32% compared to 95% increased risk of women with insufficient vitamin D level. So what they found is that when a woman's vitamin D level was less than 20 nanograms per milliliter, her risk of fibroid increased by 95%. So to our ladies who love to work in the office, who love to stay in the home, who love to avoid nature's natural vitamins, I'm here to tell you that you are at risk for fibroids by 95%. Am I making sense to you? If I'm, say, if I'm making sense, ladies, just go in the box and type in, make sense. Let, let's go on. Um, it gets gooder and gooder as we progress. Now, listen here now. PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Increased by 85%. <coughs> Excuse me. Hormonal imbalance by 95%. Colon and rectal cancer by 253%. And vitamin D deficiency increases a woman's chance of getting breast cancer by 600%. Now, ladies... Listen, this thing is so bad, okay? Do you remember years ago? Um, let me see if you guys can help me. Um, you remember years ago where um, individuals used to get sores in their mouth and they found out it was a vitamin C deficiency? You, you guys remember that? What did they say? Um, what, what was the name of that disease, that lack of vitamin C would cause? What was the name of the disease that vitamin C deficiency would cause? You're correct. It's called scurvy. I'll tell you a story about scurvy. Lady came to the store the other day. She had the sores all over her mouth, you know what I mean, in her mouth and so forth. And she said she don't know what to do. We gave her something called camel camel, which is the number one source of vitamin C on the face of the earth. She just took a few capsules. Within a couple of days, almost all the sores were gone from her mouth. She came back. She's like, wow, that stuff works so good. You have any more? She came back, got another sachet. By the time she took it, took it all of the uh, sores completely left her mouth. Um, and she was just so excited that she even wanted to kiss the young lady. Um, you know what I mean? This is an older lady. I don't think she, you know, was thinking anything in a negative way, she would just want to hug and kiss the young lady um, that gave her the advice and told her to take the vitamin, um, vitamin C in the form of camel camel. And it did get rid of all the sores in her mouth. She was just so amazed by that. Well, I'm here to tell you that the researchers today are now looking at calling breast cancer a vitamin D deficiency disease. So let's look at this. Lack of sunlight in women, chronic vitamin D deficiency, increases the woman's chance of developing polycystic ovarian syndrome by 85%. Increases the risk for hormonal imbalance by 95%. Increases the risk for colon and rectal cancer by 253%. Increases the risk for breast cancer by 600%. Increases the risk, listen to this, that I didn't put up there, lung cancer. Lung cancer is about 250% chance of getting lung cancer. Men, I'm going to add to you now, your risk of developing um, an enlarged prostate by, uh, and prostate cancer by 95%. I'm here to tell you that whatever you do, do not avoid 
nature's natural sunlight. Now, what we're going to do, I want to go ahead and pause right here. I want to pause right here. And what, um, after we pause right here, we will pick up with our lecture next time around um, right at this section. So I want to pause right here. And after we pause, we will return next week, same time, with this lecture. So let's go ahead and we're going to end the recording right here.